So welcome everyone to this week's school user drop-in. This week we're talking about mapping at the speed of conversation. I love this topic. I think using score in a workshop uh, is, is is addictive, uh, once you've got it right. A um, little bit of practice. So I love talking about this this sort of stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll go through a little quick quick introduction. We'll look at how mapping at the speed of conversation, obviously we'll be looking at mapping a, a, mapping a process. Um, then we're, we'll look at sort of the quick tips and um, uh, hints on how you can make the process look good and we'll follow up uh, with a little bit of a uh, wider kind of um, uh, just experience from us. You know, we've been doing this for years, so what are some of those things which we can point you in the right direction to make you as good as us at doing process workshops. So obviously, you know, why, why do we want to map up the speed of conversation? A lot of um, other tools out there, a lot of your experience might be with tools where you can't really but yeah, use the tools in um, in anger in a workshop. You might be just taking notes or recording meetings and transcribing it afterwards. Um, but what we're trying to do, what why we're looking at mapping at speed of conversations, really. So you don't, you shouldn't be looking at the tools. The tools should be in the background, and really facilitating the conversation that you're trying to have. That's why we put a lot of emphasis on that. Um, and so those attendees, hopefully they're enjoying it. You know, they're not distracted with what you're doing in the tool, waiting for you to navigate or create create stuff. Um, and ideally, we get to that point, place where processes are magically appearing on the screen. Yeah, you know? and that's yeah, it takes a little bit of practice. And and we talk about we talk about workshop flow an awful lot um, at score. It's about keeping the flow of momentum. You've 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 probably worked hard to get these people on the call or in the room. Um, so how do you make sure uh, you get the most out of that that time? And two an anecdotal quotes at the bottom yeah we want we want you to be using score and getting this sort of feedback from participants from your workshops you know yeah you know, we and we hear this all the time you know it's, it's the first time i've seen my process like this or first time we've agreed on what it should be um also people you know they've experienced a non-school workshop they've got a bit of a preconception of what it might be um so if we can turn that around and make it you know, dare i say make it fun <laughs> then uh then we're winning yeah so Practically, what does this mean? So SCORE, the very first version of SCORE back in the day, um, it was designed as a workshop tool. And that's still core as to what it does. So yes, you, you're going to put them in a process library and do a lot of ana analysis and uh, use it for the wider improvement opportunities, but it's got to work in a, in a workshop, right? Yeah, so uh, that's still core. So if I, I come into my edit mode here, uh, it, what, what you'll see at the bottom is you've got the basic shortcut keys here. So W, y n um and the like so if i if i click on w guess what you know that will bring in a what box so rather than bringing it in from my panel on the left here in fact what a lot of people do including myself will minimize this giving ourselves more real estate in a process workshop yeah so we can go yeah w click for a what box uh, for a y box guess what why yeah this sounds simple and but it's a stick of nature to me and um, now uh, if you want to have a note and you know, capture that kind of anecdotal uh, information or a question or an uh, extra bit of information, you can do that. It, it adds a media, yeah, it lets you add an image very, very quickly. Again, you can see it here. Um, if I double click on this, I can now go and open the media picker uh, and away we go. Where, where do you find the shortcuts? You find them along the bottom here for those top, top, the top ones, the top handful. Um, if you go to get help, you can see all the keyboard shortcuts here as well. Double yeah, or colon, it brings up the the icons. So if I wanted to correct quickly add a, I don't know, let's add a star, I can add that in and there we go. Yeah, lesser known way of bringing up icons. If I want to quickly create a link off to another process, I can do exclamation mark and I can link to any of these. Again, if I link to a process, it brings up a little wizard where I can link to any other, other information uh, and the like. Uh, cancel that. Uh, and then, but you're in a workshop, yeah. You're mapping uh, some complex processes, and someone gives you an acronym, yeah, or TLA, the three-letter acronym. Very, very common. What you can do is you can hit the uh, the hash uh, key here, and it will bring up all the acronyms, TLAs, whatever de yeah, definitions that you've already got in your glossary. If you've not played around with a glossary, it's it, it's one of those powerfully simple features. It's awesome, yeah. Um, so again, so I can see here, and if it's not in here, so if it's, I think I've already got TLA in here. If we said, I don't know, to be confirmed, to be decided, I can create it here, carry on my workshop, go back into the glossary later and add it in. 
it's as simple as that. Really, really neat way of just keeping that keeping that that flow uh, going on. Uh, let's, let's have a look. So some of the other stuff. So if I drill down, create a drill down on here, it creates a, a, a detailed view on here. You've got the input and the output below. So again, second nature after running quite a few workshops, uh, more more in school than in the other tool. And then you can use your your work you have you know your what boxes to to put them up there and crack on and, and create that process. If dragging the I and dragging the O, these are um, it seems too laborious. A couple of uh, lesser defined shortcut keys. If I hold down I, it will put my input in. If I hold down O, guess what? It puts my output in. Again, second nature to me, but really, really neat. So it's just sh um, on the above, you'll have seen a little note there saying um, even quicker ones. So if I don't want to use my mouse, uh, I can I can use the keys. I can create processes using the keyboard. Some people, that's all they do, or majority of what they do. Uh, I'm a bit of a, uh, a mouse and keyboard guy, so you can put in here. So we're doing something to something, and then you can use tab to just to type, type in, in, in all these sorts of things. So you can kind of work out what's going on and the like. I can hit return again. Now hitting space creates the next object. Yeah, and we all know and love the methodology of what box, every what box having a Y box. So guess what? You know, hit Y box, it does a what box and we can quickly come in and create uh, some processes on there. There we go. Processes. Uh, the, other, the other things which people don't often don't realize in, in school is you can copy and paste and drag copies out. So you could have a uh, version A process. Maybe you've got that here. Maybe you want to you know, show that there's, there's, there's some different routes and the like. So I can I can control C, control B. That creates a copy. Or if I highlight that just by clicking on it and hold down control on a on a Windows and uh, so I can drag out a copy of that. And then and away we go. Uh, if we come back up, we can look at uh, making the processes look good as well. So if I draw down on here, uh, if you've not played around with the aligning, it's it's pretty pretty awesome once you get used to it again a little bit of practice and you can see here these are these are the shortcut keys which i just can just 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 automatically go and go and use and you've always got to strike a balance when you're running a process workshop you, you want to make it look good but you don't want to spend time too much time making it look good yeah but actually what i find is sometimes there'll be a, a, a conversation going on or you're coming up to a break or in a break and you just want to tidy it up um it, it does help yeah so if I very, very simply, if you hold down the shift key and then create a selection box along these top here, um, anything that is touching the selection box will be selected. Yeah. Now, all I'm going to hit is T and H, uh, and away we go. Yeah, you can see here, uh, I can just drag that one back down. In fact, I'm going to redo that because that one was in the mix. Anyway, I've done T and H, I've done it again. Now, if I if I come down here and I, you can select it's so a control and left click will select the boxes as well. And everything I'm showing you is shortcut keys. But if you hover over onto the left, uh, let's open this back up. You'll see the arrange uh, button here. It's got it all here, so you don't have to remember your lefts, rights, centers, bottoms. These is vertical and like. So if I hit vertical on there, uh, I'm just going to hit uh, arrange for centers. It does that. So it's, it's, it's really quick and what you'll quickly learn is you know, what order to do it in for it to really be quite quick. You know? And again, the the other thing to remember when you're messing around with um, the alignment buttons is, if, is to uh, is to select an anchor point if you need it. So what I mean by that is I want to align these two boxes to the tops because I don't like a little wiggly line here, but I've already spaced out these. So I want this what box to be the the anchor point. So I'll I'll control left click that one, control left click that one hit tops and it will bring that one down. If I've done it the other way, it would have brought the what box up. Go and practice. It's not difficult. Yeah. And all of a sudden, guess what? It looks really neat. Yeah. So it's it's that that's 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 pretty cool. You've got you might not notice you've some you you've got an outline feature here. So I've got my I've got a, I've got some boxes down here which actually it's very common in workshops for you to sort of to, to to map to one one side and then loop it round, which I'll show you how to do in a second, um, or end up with processes that you want to condense down again. But if you want to get a, if you're up at the top left, which is the kind of entry point, uh, the outline view is really handy. Now you can move this around, uh, you can you can expand it out and use it for zoom. Yeah, 
Um, or you can use these Zoom, these things here. So actually fit all contents to Zoom. I can then use the selection, move it up, delete it, whatever it might be. So if I move that back up like that and hit the reset size, I'm now back how I wanted to. Really useful tool when you're trying to tidy up, especially the larger processes that might have sprawled because that's the way it came out of people's heads. You know? So again, we, we've all been there. That's, that's quite common. So another another cool little bit feature is, is creating detailed views on the fly as well. Again, I suggest you practice this before a workshop if you think you're going to get going to get into that space. Um, but again, what's what's very common is you'll map out a process. You you'll have more boxes on the page that you want to, um, but then you want to group them. So I just leave these for example. So again, what I'm doing here is selecting those processes using a selection box. I could control and select and deselect if I wish. And again, if I go to edit now, I can now uh move selection to a new detail view so let's have a look at what that does so i can create that box here it's now created a what box here i can name i can name that so again it should be obvious as to what, what you're naming it here but you can say it's a parent activity it's put it's moved all of this stuff down here through so i can control a that bring it up and then go through exactly the same process as i went before yeah control i want you all to be as quick as this uh, a little bit of practice, yeah. Very simply, uh, a little bit of alignment. Again, already that, that just looks better, doesn't it? Yeah, people are going to understand it a bit more. Um, it's going to look better. The what? I, so that's that's the grouping and sending down. That's what I was talking about there, or hinting at there. Looping it round. So again, what's, what's it going to do here? So it, it gets really, really common for the processes. That, let's let's do it down here. As I said, yeah, it's really common for people to to do that. Yeah, especially with a group of people. But what's also really common is that as you're tidying it up, or again in that lull, um, you might want to loop it around. And again, it's very, very quick and easy to do. So basically, you can bring out, you can say, right, I want to bring these ones back down, highlight it down, and bring it back around. So again, the methodology, there's always exceptions to that, is that you, you can see what I'm doing, is that, is that you snake processes around. Yeah, again, you probably wouldn't have stuff over here. In fact, let's not do that. But again, you can see how quick it is once once you've kind of got a little, little bit used to the tool, just to mess around, bring it around, and make your processes. If I double click that will reset. Away we go. Yeah, and again, I can do that. Um, it, it's really, really quick. Um, the other thing which people often get stuck on and formatting um, or layout um, in workshops um, is when someone says, I know I've not, I know I've not uh, I haven't got any text on here. In fact, let's let's, um, let's show the box numbers. That might help. So someone will say, yeah, again, that's not a bad tip uh, in terms of when you're running a workshop is switching the diet the, the numbers on. Yeah. So it's a really it makes it easier for people to say, oh, there's an we're missing a step between 15 and 16. So if that was the case, all I would do is delete that, move that to one side. I shouldn't have selected that, add it in and away we go. Yeah, and I can worry about the aligning in the same way as before. So again, don't don't be frightened and encourage people to say if they are missing steps, because a lot of people are used to brown paper, post-it notes, you know, and they've got like 50, 50 post-it notes and they don't want to have to move 20 of them to fit in another step, you know, which was actually doing it in a digital tool such as SCORE, um, you've got the flexibility to delete, add, remove. Yeah, great, we've added it in. Okay, now I'm, I've used the tool quite a while. I'm sure I'm making it look uh, relatively easy, um, but it, it doesn't take long. Honestly, it really doesn't take long. You know, and, and again, you, know, you don't have to learn the shortcuts. You, you've got the you've got the hints down here. You've got the, the edit. You know, you've got the arrange ones up here. Um, really, you know, it's about using the basics. Well, so hopefully, hopefully this is going over all ground for, for a lot of you. But if you are new to the tool, um, I know I always appreciate having a little bit of guidance from people that have used it before. In terms of hints and tips, uh, so from the minds uh, of Colin Craig and myself, founders of SCORE, um, there's lots we could have shared, but I actually just want to focus on the main things. <clears throat> my, my top tip for, for mapping at the speed of conversation is, is really to, to follow the five steps to the perfect process. We've got drop-ins running on that. We've got a, a one page, or if you haven't got a copy of that, you know, this is really about the methodology um, and it's around, it, it outlines the, the simple steps you take to run a workshop, you know, setting the scope, 
putting the activities in? What are the wide boxes off the back of that? Then hooking it up. And and trust me, you know, if you if people pull you away from that, especially the mapping one another at a time, you'll think you're doing the right thing, but it will slow things down in the long term. So I'm, I really do strongly advocate, you know, learning the pro the five steps um, and leaning on them. It's a, it's a tool for you as a facilitator as much as an attendee um, understanding those processes. One of the chaps also suggested switching all activities, what boxes to verb and noun. I do this, I do this again automatically with people. I don't know if it winds people up or not, but once they work out what I'm doing, it, it makes it flow a lot, a lot better. So rather than people saying, um, oh, that's invoicing. I know what, it's, what, what, what are we doing to invoicing? Oh, we're processing invoices. Yeah, we're, we're triaging them. We're do, whatever. It gets people to think about the process. And once they start to do that, Again, the process will flow, the workshop will flow a, uh, a lot. Uh, Steps uh, hint, in hint here, and this, I, I really love this one. I think this came from Craig actually. He's saying it's not about typing at the speed of conversation. Yeah, so we're not expecting you all to become speed typers, you know, and trying to get you know, people just to rattle off context. It's about guiding the conversation and capturing that process when people are talking and having a conversation about the process. If you need to pause someone and say, oh, sorry, I missed you. Yeah, can we just just you know, elaborate on what is it you said? Brilliant. Um, but you can, but it's really around just don't, so don't panic and think we, we, we have to speak. It's not about, it's not a race. It's about just having a nice flow to the conversation and, and capturing the process um, as you go along. Item four there, being conscious that you've got different types of people in the room. That is always the case. Yeah, you'll always have someone at a high level thinking at a high level. Of the process, yeah, um, and then you have the detailed people. So taking the time to make sure they're all aligned, using the grouping at the right time as well is a really good tool to get people have, have it talking at the um, uh, at the same level, you know, on the same purpose. And the last one is practice makes perfect. Uh, often when we train people, when we onboard them, we, we we as I've just done now, hands up, apologies, I've dumped a load of stuff on you. Um, you know, all these like all these um, hints and tips and uh, shortcuts. Honestly, you will still be a lot quicker process mapping, you know, doing it in score the first time than, than using other tools or other techniques. Yeah, you're, you're, you'll be thinking of the things you're not doing, but your attendees in your workshop um, will be impressed. Yeah, and you'll get quicker and you'll get slicker uh, with that practice. Um, but you've got to practice. Yeah, it's as simple as that. But don't don't worry about trying to be as quick as us you know at the first time uh, we've been using it for quite a while um, but you can you really can uh, get up to speed very very quickly that's that's a bit a bit of an overview about mapping at the speed of conversation Brilliant. okay team well as usual we're an approachable bunch if you've got any questions uh, if you need any advice uh, please do reach out um, you know we love what we do and we're always happy to talk about it so yeah if you want to pick our brains on anything do, do reach out to yourself team support Thank you.